workshop is going on all weekend. On Friday, we have a black and gray workshop with Nico, Carlos, and Franco, which is going to be phenomenal. And then the next day, a color workshop with Steve Butcher, Boris, and Nico. It's, it is going to be such a pleasure for you guys to hear this interview with Shanghai Kate, the godmother of tattooing. Tattoo headache. It's very, very strong. Always has been. And it's very important to have a strong one. So, that's what I want, a little clipper ship. And they said, no. And what? I said, what? They said, no, you can't get that. And I said, why not? And they said, that's a man's design. Those ethics, they're really important. They always has been. But I mean, before the lawmaker got their nose into our business, tattooing was uh, self-regulated. So that mean that it's other tattooists that would... Uh, make sure that the ethics is respected and if uh, one shop was not respecting this then they would be put down thrown things in their windows shut down scared out of town and shit like that now it's not like that anymore and there's a lot of people tattooing and the ethic they're good some of them we should keep forever i mean it just it just makes sense to have like common ground but some of those ethics are a little outdated In the 60s, you know, it was not really respected because there were no autoclave in the shop and they were not really using it and then gloves came like way later. But, you know, nowadays like it's something that is there and I'm not really scared because, you know, like you really need to be an idiot not to clean your stuff. Like it's in this world, the information is there. There's no reason for you not to know, not to ask, not to see those things. I mean disposable tubes comes and you unwrap it needles are new they're unwrapped and then you see how clean the place and then you should see some cavi wipe or some kind of juice that's gonna do sterilization surface so this is this is one of the things that is necessary and it's not discuss like you, you you don't discuss that you just do it yeah yeah and do you think that that's the best way for tattoo artists to learn? Well, uh, when people come to me and ask, how do I learn? I tell them, keep your uh, eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. Because that's what I did. And that's how you learn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So did you see your style start? Word of wisdom. <laughs> Tattooing should be taught by apprenticeship. So, you've got a master and you've got an apprentice. But who the hell name you a master? Uh, an apprenticeship is three years of learning and three years that you hold to the shop. It's six years. It's not easier than going to the university. And I did have the master who taught me stuff, was tattoo stuff, but it was also like ethic of life of a tattooist. And I think that was a big, big part of who I am today. And, and yeah, I did give trick to um, guys that wanted to become a tattooist. And I specifically, specifically told them, I am not your master. I am not a master. Like I can give you tricks and tips, but you know, a proper apprenticeship is not me because nobody named me a master. And uh, I, I think it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of dedication to give to someone. And now some guys that wants to feel important, they open school, they charge you like two, three thousand dollar, teach you for a week. A week? You can't learn shit in a week. <laughs> and then and then sends all those people in the world to tattoo and make mistake. You make 
2030 drawing, tattoo like drawing, you make a nice portfolio, you find a shop where they're nice to you, where you fit in, and then you get a proper apprenticeship. This is the easiest way to do it. And you say 2030 drawing, that's a lot. Well, you're gonna be doing like up to 600 drawing a year if you're doing small stuff, and if you're doing big stuff, you're gonna do something like 200 drawing a year and that's beside the painting and the drawing and the flash and the stuff that you want to do beside it so if you don't like drawing you shouldn't do that job i mean if you don't like drawing you're gonna be able to tattoo but you're gonna find your life very difficult you're not gonna like tattooing If you can't make a tattoo because you don't have the ability to make it, just don't start it. You will have the ability later. For now, you can't do it, don't do it. About the small tattoos, I mean, if you can't make it, like I said, don't make it. But then your customer wants something. The idea of a good tattoo that lasts for a long time is, is very valuable. But in the same times, you're starting your answer with a no to a customer all the time, then you're not gonna be working. I mean, you know, like have some understanding for what people want, not just what you want to be doing. And, and this ethic of not doing hands and finger, it comes from the 50s and the 60s, where only bad people were getting tattooed, you know? And so you were going to ruin their life for real. And now it, it changed, like you've got a lot of classy ladies that's got tattooed finger and they get along, they, they get well in life. They have nice job, they're just doing fine. Now those tattoos don't heal perfect, the client needs to know that, it needs to know that it will change their life, but I mean, this is an old ethic and it's changing. Is it good or bad? I don't know. It's a really personal choice for a tattooist to decide to do it or not. I remember Zico and telling me that he got fired two times from the same job for tattooing hands. He still, he still did it. That tattooist believed that those people could have a tattoo in the end and that was fine. While another tattooist right beside them would believe that it's not fine and we should not do it. The ethic you have should benefit you, not, not damage you, not, not keep you from advancing. So if you do a bad finger tattoo or a bad hand tattoo, it's going to hurt your business, it's going to hurt your, your client's life, it's going to hurt everything, it's going to fuck up the whole thing. So if the tattoo was done by a tattooist that still tattoos and that's a good tattooist and he could finish the job, I would probably not do it. But because the tattooist doesn't work anymore, it's, it was done here, the client is a long time of a client of the shop, I could do something for it and I will not be able to make a miracle but I will be able to make it look better. And so there I didn't let an ethic of we don't touch somebody else work get in the way of my client being happy with a tattoo that he's very unhappy with. That I could do something, right? And I'm not insulting anybody. And if I does, I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of like a touchy subject because a lot of people will think that it's wrong, you don't do that, I don't think it's right. 
But I mean, like I said, there's a fine line of yes, it's okay, and no, it's not okay. And there you have to judge, you have to use your judgment. <clears throat> there is a thousand one more ethic. I mean, show up for work, don't drink and work. Um, be ready when your customer comes. And um, those will always be good. It's just... This industry is changing and the ethic should be changing with it. There's good one and there's out of that one. And I mentioned that earlier. This is a very tricky topic to talk about because it's politics. Everybody's got one ethic that they believe that is the right one and they think that everybody should work the same way, right? But this is really a personal thing. So there's basics that everybody, every professional should follow. But there's a little thing where you choose to work a certain way rather than another. And um, you know, it's, it's really up to each one to choose what kind of ethic they will be choosing to work with. Outcast people, they pretty much do as they think they should be doing, not as they're told. So, my point here is that you need to have ethic if you're gonna work in that field, and you need to have strong one, and you need to walk the talk. You need to actually respect them, not just talk about them to make people believe that you have some, you know? But don't let them get in your way of achieving and advancing. It, it would be a silly thing. Very, very silly. <laughs> very silly. <laughs>